Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. And this video is about the best gold forming spot in the current Warcraft patch 6.24 and the secret techniques I'm going to show you to maximize your returns from this location. This video is designed for a combat row, but I'll explain how other classes can use the same tricks at the end of the video. Before you do anything, port to your garrison and then enter the Proving Grounds. Once inside the Proving Grounds, you'll want to click on Teleport Out of Dungeon. This is important and I'll explain and show you why later. Now you want to get over to the Dread Wastes in Pandaria. I have my Hearthstone set to the nearby Klaxi Vess. Just going to hearth there. And once there, you'll want to make your way over to the Heart of Fear raid instance to the left of Klaxi Vess there on the map. Now, once you've entered the dungeon there, you'll need the talents Leeching Poison and Burst of Speed. Also, make sure your Blade Fiery talent is active. Uh, follow the course I'm taking closely as I go through the dungeon. You're pulling everything up to the first boss. Spam Burst of Speed and get close enough to aggro every pack, but not so close that you get stunned. The stuns can be lethal. Uh, when you've pulled everything, You'll need to use the Killing Spree talent. And this has an amazing synergy with Blade Fury and Leech Poison. Even though this is a level 90 instance, uh, collectively these mobs uh, can do you a lot of damage and can kill you if they get you in multiple stuns. So we're going to turn our DPS ability as a rogue uh, into healing. You can see how it works there. You see my health is barely going down despite getting hit by all these mobs. Now this is where we start to use exploits. Leave a couple of the mobs alive, uh, use Vanish and drop combat. You'll want to change your burst of speed talent to Shadow Step. Re-aggro the mobs you left alive, then drag them over to the door to the second chamber. Try and position the mobs, as I'm illustrating here, so they're right inside the door, and Shadow Step through, then backpedal through. And the point of this is to allow you to farm the trash in the second chamber without having to kill the first boss, which will remove your access to the trash in the first chamber if you use an instant re instance reset. And this makes this the largest and most po profitable trash farm in the whole of Warcraft. I'm just going to go over to the right here and aggro these two mini bosses. Uh, they shouldn't give you any trouble. Each of the mini bosses has a special ability on this level. Uh, only one of them should give you any trouble. And if you have a decent eye level, none of them should give you any trouble. You want to be slightly more careful with the mini-boss instructor, Malik, as he has a silent strike ability which takes away a chunk of your health. My level's about 707 now. Uh, it doesn't really give me any trouble, but it still takes away about 40% of my health, this ability. And, uh, when I was trying this uh, with my level at 670, did die a few times uh, to that ability. So just be a bit careful if your eye levels are a bit below average. Now we're going to finish off this final mini boss 
And as you're killing him, turn off Blade Fury so you don't accidentally kill all the trash around him. Now, as before, you want to leave a couple of mobs alive and lure them over to the door to your left, which leads to the third level. Uh, again, using sh uh, using the mobs to shadow strap through the door. These mobs can be a little awkward to position uh, because they have a sort of shadow step ability of their own. And then there's two flights of stairs and there's another door at the top so you'll want to leave those mobs alive. Don't want to get trapped on the stairwell. And now we're at the top and we're going to shadow step through to the final level that we're going to in this instance, the third level. Uh, this landing. Uh, none of the trash on this level should give you any problems at all. It's all very basic and straightforward here. This looks more dramatic than it actually is. Those hurricanes don't stun you and they don't really do any damage. And having killed all the trash on the third level, you'll want to make your way out of the dungeon quickly. And do you remember that we entered the Proving Grounds at the start of the video? Um, this is why. Uh, because we want to get to the start of the raid and we don't want to have to walk out because that'll take ages. So we just return to the Proving Grounds and you can pick up a health stone while you're there and then exit. Amazingly enough, we'll be right outside the raid instance we just exited. Now this trick is incredibly valuable, not just just for farming this particular instance, but dungeon or raid farming in general. In many cases, dramatically improving your returns from gold farming. And just reset the instance, and we can start the whole process again. Now, having done all that, it's time to tally up the loot, and here is the result of four runs on all three levels. You should be shooting for ten runs in an hour, which is the maximum before instance lockout, uh, but my bags will only contain just after four runs, so that's all I can show you. Four runs on Heart of Fear, all three levels. You get 71 plundered treasures, uh, which yield 199 gold. Four patterns, uh, which I'm not counting uh, for these purposes, I'll explain why in a minute. Six ghost iron locks boxes containing 262 gold. 50 greens at 699 gold. Two purples, which I also vended for 33 gold. 84 moats, which is eight spirits of harmony at 640 gold. 22 black trillium at 220 gold. 44 white trillium, which I sold for 440 gold. Those are very conservative auction house prices. I wanted those to sell ultra fast. You can get much better returns uh, from those uh, if you're even remotely patient. Uh, the next highest price on the auction house, uh, apart from mine, was uh, 13 gold uh, per block of trillium. I also managed to sell Windwall Cloth to the value of 34 gold and Ghost Iron Ore to the value of 41 gold. Very small amounts there, but they sold virtually the second I put them up in the auction house. So I'm going to include those. And I also got raw gold to the value of 21. And overall, this gave me a profit of 2,594 gold for the four runs. And when we multiply the full runs by 2.5 to get our hypothetical maximum profit before we get instance lockout, our hourly profit is 6,485 gold. Now, note that this number is based on mostly on vendor items and items which sold within the hour on the auction house. And this was on a very low population server, Airy Peak. 
It's not completely dead, but it's pretty close to it. On a higher population server and with a little patience, profits of around 15k an hour are quite plausible. It's 15,000 gold an hour. For example, the patterns I mentioned I have not included in any returns, but these quite often sell for thousands of gold on high population or consumption houses. Now, you may be thinking, but this guy said this was the best farm in WoW. But there are all these videos out there which show people claiming to make hundreds of thousands of gold per hour. And the reason for this is basically that those videos tend to exaggerate your actual hourly profits very significantly by using measurements such as looted item value. If I was to do this, uh, if I was to use exactly the same metrics here, I could easily complain, I could easily claim that you could make 200k in an hour from this farm by holding out for a great price on every BOE item you can farm in Heart of Here. Uh, however, this would be very deceptive as that isn't really practical. There's so much downtime involved in repeatedly posting items up in the auction house and the fees do bite into your profits and you have to log in and check those items when you don't necessarily want to so even the raw uh, value of your labor expended isn't really an accurate metric uh, comparing like with like I have found nothing out there which will make more money uh, on a consistent basis for a lot more information on this I suggest you check out my wow gold guide video and uh, just before I finish, you may be wondering if you don't have a rogue to hand, or you don't know anybody uh, who has a rogue that you could work with, uh, whether you can do this uh, with your character. And to some extent you can. Now it's going to be a bit slower because the method you use to get through the doors is a little different. And um, it was developed by a guy called Hazzy Bazzy. Basically it involves the uh, seesaw toy. Uh, which you can get from the Dark Moon Fair and the Swap Blaster. Now that's Hazzy Bazzy's method. He posted it on the Uncourse site recently. I'm going to link to that below. I'm not going to detract from the value of Hazzy Bazzy's video. I'm just going to link to it. So by all means check that out. I think you'll find uh, that will be a bit slower because a rogue can more or less instantaneously get through the door with a bit of practice and uh, the seesaw method it will take a bit longer uh, but it, so it's the same basic principle and it does work. Additionally I must stress that to do 10 runs in an hour will require a decent eye level and quite a bit of a quite a bit of practice. Uh, you'll probably get very frustrated at first, uh, but I would recommend you persevere. It is worth it. Okay, so there's the hack. Hope you found it interesting and useful. If you did, please subscribe, and thank you for watching. This has been Artrelder. Take care!